Iran says it will take revenge for the U.S. killing of its most powerful military commander. General Qasim Soleimani died when his convoy was hit by a U.S. drone at Baghdad airport. The general was the commander of the Quds Force of Iran's elite Revolutionary Guards. They're responsible for Iranian foreign military operations and answer directly to the country's supreme leader, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei. General Soleimani, who for many was seen as a charismatic national hero at home, uh, tens of thousands of Iranians are holding rallies in Tehran and other cities now, denouncing what they call U.S. crimes. Well, Washington said it killed the general because he was developing plans to attack Americans in Iraq and the wider region. Quentin Somerville reports. Untouchable no more. The aftermath of the U.S. strike at Baghdad airport and the Middle East's most brutally effective commander, Qasem Soleimani, is dead. He led Iran's Quds force, but his reach was far greater. Few men have shaped the countries around them like General Soleimani. The order for the assassination came directly from U.S. President Donald Trump, who posted only a cryptic tweet, the U.S. flag. His presence was felt or his name mentioned in almost every battlefield across the Middle East. He served Iran's interests with vicious efficiency. Here in Lebanon and in Iraq, Syria and elsewhere, he leaves behind a brutal legacy. Qasem Soleimani reshaped the world around him. Iran says there will be severe consequences for his killing. Republican Guard spokesman General Ramazan Sharif broke down at the news and said that American joy at Qasem Soleimani's death would be short-lived and promised to take revenge for what he described as the death of a proud martyr. In Iraq, for those protesting Iranian influence, there were celebrations at news of his death. He was the mastermind behind Iranian power there, even, it is rumoured, ensuring the Prime Minister Abdul Mahdi stayed in power. We have not wanted Iran's influence in Iraq from the beginning, and we also condemn America's interference in Iraq's domestic affairs. We don't want Iraq to be pushed into the American-Iranian conflict. He was an electrifying presence on the battlefield. Once described as a shadowy figure, he soon became the region's most photographed general as militiamen clamoured for selfies with the Iranian commander. The United States appeared caught on the hop when earlier this week, pro-Iranian protesters launched a short-lived attack on its embassy. But the gravity of this assassination seems to have been already understood. More American boots on the ground. The Pentagon said the killing was a defensive act to prevent the deaths of U.S. personnel. Hundreds of U.S. troops are flooding the region, while all other Americans have been told to leave Iraq. The country's disengagement from here may now be on hold. In life, Qasem Soleimani reshaped the countries around Iran. His killing runs the risk of doing the same. Quentin Somerville there. Well, our chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, is in Kabul. Lise, how big is this moment? It's a massive uh, moment in a region which was already extremely tense and where for more than a year now people have warned and worried about the possibility of a direct confrontation between Iran and United States after the United States pulled out of the Iran nuclear deal. But we had heard from leaders on all sides, including leaders in this region, they didn't want a war, that the region couldn't afford another war. But yet this step uh, that was apparently ordered by President Trump uh, has set the region on an even more dangerous path. Iran will retaliate. It, well, given that the strains inside Iran itself, both economically and politically, it will be a carefully calibrated uh, retaliation, but a retaliation no less. And I think right now, given the rising tensions in the region, not just in Iran, where Iranian leaders are vowing revenge, but also heads of the militias, proxy militias created across this region, deeply loyal to Qasem Soleimani, who for them, he was a cult hero. Uh, they too are vowing revenge. It's a deeply dangerous and unpredictable time across this region, including in Afghanistan, where I am now, where U.S. forces are based, which could also be one of the proxy battlefields where Iran could choose to act.
General Soleimani, hugely powerful, hugely influential, not just in Iran, not just in Iraq, but beyond. He was a deeply polarizing figure across the region. He had this magnetic uh, pers personality, uh, very, very elusive, as Quentin Somerville was saying, that he had this air of mystery, this myth around his powerful presence across this region could be as the architect of the strategy which kept uh, President Assad in power, kept Iranian militias in Iraq uh, continually on, on the in commanding positions, strengthened Hezbollah in, in Lebanon, uh, and very, very powerful um, in all of the actions that he commanded. And more than that, he was also a powerful political personality inside Iran for, for his supporters there. He had celebrity status with the power only second to Iran's uh, sp supreme leader, Ayatollah Khamenei, and predictions uh, last year that he could even be a future political leader. But he had his enemies as well, and we're hearing from them today too. Lise, we are beginning to get more top-level reaction from the United States. That tweet just now from Donald Trump saying Iran never won a war but never lost a negotiation. Uh, Mike Pompeo has been uh, tweeting about the number of calls he's making with foreign leaders. The word he keeps using now is de-escalation. Well, we've heard that, that word, too, from Britain, from Germany, uh, from Brussels. Uh, nobody wants a war. Everyone realizes what's at stake here, and even more so after this, what is really being seen as a dramatic, uh, but sudden, and for many of America's allies, a surprising escalation. Many are asking now, was there any consultation with allies who also have their forces on the ground? We understand that the U.S. Congress was not consulted. I think in the days to come, we will hear more about the decision-making process which led this commander-in-chief, uh, President Donald Trump, to take a decision uh, that uh, presidents before him, including President Bush and President Obama, had stopped short of. They, too, had Qasem Soleimani in their sights, but stepped back, knowing just how inflammatory uh, targeted killing would be. And now we're finding about, about that today, and in, certainly in the days and weeks, if not months, to come. Interestingly, on that point, Lise, one of the things that Mike Pompeo has been saying in his first interviews is the risk of doing nothing regarding Iran was enormous. So, as you say, successive administrations in Washington have thought about this move. They've taken it now. But the Pentagon in their statement, including the Defense Secretary Mark Esper, has given the rationale for this attack now as saying it was a move to prevent further Iranian attacks. Uh, they have blamed Iran both for the recent attacks uh, by pro-Iranian militias on the U.S. Embassy in Iraq, but also saying that he was planning uh, coordinating future attacks on American personnel in Iraq. So now we're hearing from the United States, from Democrats, from others, from, from observers of this crisis are saying, well, show us the evidence. Uh, America's record on intelligence is, is a very patchy one. And people are saying, well, if you have evidence uh, that Iran was planning these attacks, and personally, Qasem Soleimani himself, then show us the evidence. And we're getting slightly different messaging from when Secretary Pompeo was asked at a press conference. He talked about threats in the region, which seemed to be a slightly different uh, emphasis than what we heard from the Defense Secretary earlier. So I think, given the consequences of this, given the way it has ratcheted up tensions in the region, given the possibility that this could escalate, although Iran, too, will want to avoid a tit-for-tat uh, uh, that endangers its own interests in the region. Uh, people will say, well, why was this done and in whose name? Let's hear more about international reaction now to the killing of General Soleimani. Uh, Syria has blamed the United States for instability in Iraq. It's condemned what it called the treacherous, criminal American aggression that led to the killing of the general and said this attack constitutes a serious escalation. China, a major buyer of Iranian oil and a UN Security Council member, has asked for restraint from both sides, especially from the United States. The UK Foreign Secretary, Dominic Raab, has said, we've always recognised the aggressive threat posed by the Iranian Quds force led by Qasim Soleimani. Following his death, we urge all parties to de-escalate. Further conflict is in none of our interests. Well, we've also been hearing uh, from Israel. A short while ago, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu voiced his support for the U.S. drone strike. Just as Israel has the right of self-defense, the United States has exactly the same right 
Qasem Soleimani is responsible for the death of American citizens and many other innocent people. He was planning more such attacks. President Trump deserves all the credit for acting swiftly, forcefully, decisively. Israel stands with the United States in its just struggle for peace, security, and self-defense. Thank you. Benjamin Netanyahu there. We've seen a big picture, heard about the big picture there from our uh, chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette. I want to take you now to Tehran. We're joined by Professor Sayed Mohammed Mirandi, who's in Tehran. He was a member of the Iranian delegation during the U.S.-Iran nuclear talks. Can I ask you first about the reaction, the mood in Iran today? Well, since this was an act of war and the United States murdered a senior Iranian official and military commander, uh, there is extraordinary outrage in Iran and demands that Iran uh, punish the United States. And the same is true in Iraq. The Americans also murdered a senior Iraqi commander who at the airport received General Soleimani. Uh, at the Baghdad International Airport, and uh, he too was murdered and killed uh, in front of, in uh, alongside his entourage, and uh, therefore the the outrage among most Iraqis is is uh, quite clear and open. And I think that the Americans are miscalculating by behaving like a rogue regime that disregards Iraqi sovereignty, that murders at will, that. Uh, ignores the orders of the Iraqi prime minister that has an embassy the size of a country in Baghdad that behaves like an imperial power. This is not going to serve American interests and I think uh, the Americans will soon recognize that uh, its position in Iraq is no longer sustainable. Professor Morandi, we're just showing our viewers some pictures, the latest pictures from the streets of Tehran. Uh, you say the Americans have miscalculated. Uh, Mike Pompeo has said in the last hour or so the risk of doing nothing was enormous. They had to act because of the threat posed by General Soleimani and the forces he commands. Well, Pompeo is the same person who said at the CIA we had courses where we taught how to lie, cheat, and steal. This is the same person, if I'm not mistaken. And the United States, this is the same regime in Washington that lied its way into a war in Iraq. So there is nothing honest about anything that comes from Washington. But uh, this is our turf, and this is an attack on our sovereignty and our dignity and the dignity of the people of Iraq. And the Americans are going to have to face the consequences. Uh, if Imagine uh, a foreign country was to kill uh, the most senior officials or military officials in the British Armed Forces. What would the British response be? That's exactly the sort of response that people are discussing right now. So about that the response. The Western countries cannot expect double standards. They destroyed Iraq. Let me ask you then about that response and how you think that retaliation could come. Well, I think obviously Iraqis will uh, demand the full withdrawal of the United States from their country and most probably uh, there will be uh, armed conflict if the United States does not do so. Uh, the Americans have been murdering uh, Iraqi he war heroes that have been fighting ISIS for a, a long time now. Every time they, just a few days ago, they murdered 30 soldiers on the Iraq-Syria border who, on the, who were on the front line of fighting ISIS. The Americans clearly don't want the Syrian-Iraqi border opened, so uh, they want to strangle the Syrian economy and uh, they want to isolate uh, Syria from Iraq, so You're they more empower about what ISIS by Iraqis murdering want. You're Iraqi talking soldiers. about the reaction of people in Iraq, but we have also seen uh, celebrations in Tahrir Square in Baghdad of, from those who've been demonstrating for weeks and, and for longer against Iranian influence on the government of Iraq. So some are celebrating this airstrike. Don't mislead yourself. I think that uh, by now uh, people in Western countries should have recognized that the Ba'athists, those who fought for Saddam Hussein, 
they obviously would be celebrating. And those who supported ISIS, they too would be celebrating. And those who work for American NGOs, which there are over a thousand in Iraq, they too would be celebrating. But you will see in the coming hours and days the huge numbers of people who will be coming to the streets for the funeral, as they did for the funeral a couple of days ago for the 30 soldiers that the Americans murdered uh, on the Iraqi-Syrian border. Uh, again, I, I think the problem in Western countries is that the propaganda against Iran is extensive, but they come to believe their own propaganda. For 40 years now, it's been that Iran is hatred, Iran is unpopular, the, the, the so-called regime, as the Western media likes to call it, is despised at home, but it's, uh, it is powerful, it is popular, it is prepared to defend itself. And in Iraq, if the United States was so popular, then why are they constantly bombing and killing and murdering people? Uh, there's, there's a pa Iran, paradox because here. We're the showing United States viewers, has lost across the board. We're showing in our Syria, viewers right lost. now pictures from General Soleimani's hometown. There are hundreds, possibly thousands of people there in the streets uh, demonstrating, beginning the morning uh, for the general. I want to ask you, Professor Morandi, if this situation escalates, and you've talked about the sovereignty and dignity of Iran and the need for some retaliation, if the situation escalates, Surely it will also damage the people of Iran, where the, your economy is staggering already. Well, the Americans are far more vulnerable than Iran is. The United Arab Emirates, which is aiding the United States in its economic war against Iran and which is providing the United States with military installations to uh, uh, behave aggressively towards Iran, is extremely vulnerable. So is Saudi Arabia. Uh, these two countries are facing enormous problems because of the massacres that they've been carrying out in Yemen for the past few years. They've drained their resources. So it's not as if the United States and its close allies, like uh, the Saudi regime, uh, they are doing very well. They are much more vulnerable than Iran because they have many more assets alongside the Persian Gulf that can be destroyed. But remember, the United States created al-Qaeda in Afghanistan. The United States aided Saddam Hussein, gave him chemical weapons. Then, after they empowered Saddam Hussein and helped him use those chemical weapons, even against his own people, then they had a war against Saddam. Then they imposed sanctions where they killed a, mil the, uh, killed a million Iraqis. Then they invaded and destroyed Iraq uh, through lies, uh, claiming that they had nuclear weapons and that they were linked to al-Qaeda. Lie after lie after lie. In Syria, the United States with the Saudis, they destroyed the country through supporting extremists. They've destroyed this region. They've Professor. destroyed Syria. You can blame the Syrian government, but the reality is that Western governments, they were the ones who've created, created this mess in Libya, Yemen. Iranians know that if they don't stand firm, that they will be next. So, so there's no option. We're going to leave it there with your words that if Iran, Iran sure knows it Americans has to stand firm or they, they will be next. Professor Syed Mohammed Morandi, thank you for joining us live from Tehran. Thank you.